We're going to now look at transforms in SVG. Uh, I ended up recording this out of sequence. I overlooked the transforms and I created a bunch more videos. So this one is numbered 5A and it should follow 5. Um, it turns out the transforms are really helpful and I didn't want you to wait and go through all the videos before you saw them at the end. Some of these I've actually used already in uh, the presentations that you might see before or after this one. So the first transformation is called translate uh, and in computer graphics we call this translation. One way of thinking about this is it changes the coordinate system and in SVG the uh, DX and DY are values that are and they can be positive or negative that uh, change what is the current X and Y position and this is a little tricky depends on what you're actually trying to translate so for instance with the circle this would be the center uh, with a rectangle it'll be the upper left corner I'm going to go through the different tra uh, transforms and then I'll show you the example that I've done in uh, Dreamweaver the next one is scale this lets us change the size and there's two versions of this so if you just give one parameter that means it'll be uniformly scaled in both the X and the Y axis this can be a floating point value. Uh, if it's less than one, it will make the uh, uh, element smaller. And if it's greater than one, it will make it bigger. Also, you can uh, flip or mirror the element by using a negative value. So if you look down here at the bottom of the slide where it says scale one, negative one, that's going to flip it on the y-axis, which means turn it upside down and then scale negative one one uh, is going to uh, flip it in a mirror like way along the x horizontal axis um, I think you can actually use either format here although uh, I would have put the comma in there for the second one it seems like it's kind of uh, flexible on that which kind of surprises me uh, SKU will basically uh, adjust on either the X or the Y so we have SKU X or SKU Y and then here units are typically pixels but uh, I guess there could be some other kinds of measurements as well and um, it's kind of hard to explain what this does in the example I've created a smiley face which is circular so uh, it doesn't it does show this but typically when people show you how the SKU works they use a rectangle and then uh, what happens is if you skew on the x-axis the sides of the rectangle are no longer vertical uh, they're skewed to the left or the right uh, you can use a negative value to skew one direction to the left and a positive to skew to the right and then uh, the skew y is going to uh, skew the top and the bottom of uh, the rectangle but it would leave the sides vertical so again, we're using a circle here, so that won't be quite as uh, uh, clear. Uh, the next transformation is called Rotate, and uh, you just specify the degrees. This is going to uh, rotate it uh, clockwise. If you use a negative value for the degrees, it'll rotate uh, negative um, you know, counterclockwise. Sorry. And then normally, if you just use the first form here with only the degrees, it's going to rotate the object uh, in, in place. If you specify the center X and the center Y for a rotation, which might be outside of the figure, then it'll actually rotate around that point. This is similar to the way we have an object follow a path. You might remember there that there's a parameter called uh, rotate that lets you have it actually turn the object as it rotates so it maintains its relationship uh, to the circle, uh, the tangent point to the circle that it's on. Again, rotation is clockwise. Use a negative value to do counterclockwise. And this is in degrees, not gradients, as we often see in these graphic systems. Um, the G element, this isn't really a transformation, but I thought I'd throw this in here because it's something we need to use. Uh, this is short for group, and what it does is it allows me to group a number of elements together uh, to form a subsystem that I can then treat as a single object. 
And so in this example, I'm going to draw a face using uh, a, a big circle for the head, two smaller circles for the eyes, and then a Q path for the mouth. And I'll group that all together and give it an ID of face, and then I'll be able to reuse uh, the face. And I'll actually show you the transforms with that. Here's the code for the face, and you can see that I've used the uh, XML, HTML qu uh, comment style to identify the parts. So uh, again, we start with a G node here, and it has an ID of face, and uh, here's the closing, uh, matching closing element for that. Then the first element is the head. This is a circle with a radius of 75, and it's centered at 100-100. It has uh, a black stroke with width of 5 and a yellow fill. And then we have the left and the right eye. Uh, these have a radius of 10. Uh, they have a smaller stroke width. They are both filled. And uh, basically you can see that they're at CY, center Y, uh, 85, which is um, basically just below the edge here. So see this is centered at 100 and that means that the very topmost tangent point is 100 minus 75 which is 25 and then uh, the uh, bottom point would be uh, bottom tangent point would be 175 so again it's a radius of 75 which means a diameter of 150 and so uh, this is uh, slightly above the center you see that it's kinda how you figure this stuff out uh, of course, you can look at it and uh, then change it. And I did that. I tweaked the numbers to get it to look good. Finally, we have the mouth, which is drawn with a path command. Uh, we start here at uh, 70, 120, and uh, then we draw a line to 130, 120. So again, the Y is going to be the same. And then this goes from 70 to 130 on the Y axis uh, equal to 120. And then here's the control point. And in this case, the control point is at the very bottom to force the mouth to be curved like this. And it's kind of interesting. Right now, I have the fill set to none, but you get a pretty nice effect when you turn the fill on. Then you get a filled mouth that looks good. OK, uh, the next element is the use. And we're going to use this in tandem with our G. And later on, if you get more into this, there's a similar way to create uh, reusable subsystems called symbol. And uh, actually, I think you can use this with anything that has a name. So I can just say use X length. Uh, when I say a name, I mean an ID. So if you look here, use X length href pound face. Again, that's the uh, ID for my face element that I just went through with you. So this says use the face, and then I have a transform here which can be any number of the transforms that we covered. It doesn't have to just be one, you can use one or more. And uh, that's what we're going to see here in the uh, example that I've done. Okay? Alright, let's take a look at the um, Dreamweaver. So we'll just pop up that. And uh, I think what I'll do is go ahead and comment these out so you can see them one at a time. Because uh, I've got them all free right now and it might be a little confusing to see them all at once. So let's just go ahead and um, comment out all of the uh, uses except for the first. And then we'll go and undo them as we go. Okay? Alright, uh, let me pop over here to Chrome. I already have this open. That's what it's going to look like when we do them all. If we reload it, we have two. So now let's go back in the code and figure out what we're looking at. So, the first face is actually the one where I'm defining it. And uh, it's been a while since I've looked at this, but I believe if you use a symbol instead of G, it won't show up on the screen. So one problem when we're doing an animation uh, or a presentation is when we create a thing with G, it goes ahead and renders it. And so what uh, a lot of people will do is they'll set this opacity up here to uh, equal zero. 
And so what will happen then is this is transparent and it won't show up. So now when I go back in here, so the idea of course is the G is just the definition of the object and I'm going to reload it yet, uh, load it yet later. You know what? I made a mistake because uh, I have to change it back when I uh, deploy it. So down here I need to put the opacity back in and uh, let's make this one one okay. which of course is a hundred percent okay alright let's uh, pop back to Chrome reload and whoops Okay, what's going on here? This should override. Let's see, opacity, scale. Oh well. Um, I'm going to try one time to get this to work. If not, then I'll just put it back and we'll go on. Alright, so I'll have to figure that out. Let me go ahead and uh, remove this. And, uh, oh, you know, there's the problem right there. This 1.0. Control S to save. So the idea here is we set the opacity to zero in the G element where it gets created because we don't really want to show it yet and then when we reuse it eh, it's still not working okay so I'm not sure what's going on there let me go ahead and get rid of this I'll save it and um, just to make sure I'm going to get rid of this too because I didn't have that in there before okay so let's go back this is going to find the G element it will show up Here's our first use of that element. So again, notice we're using the xlink syntax and uh, the ID of the G element that I want to use. And then this first transform is a translate, which says move it to uh, dx, dy, 300, 300. Now, it's important to note that that is actually in relation uh, to the center point of this. So it, that's actually going to be 400 400 okay and then notice this we have the scale was 1 1 which won't change the size but this negative one here will flip it on the vertical axis uh, let's see what we get here so back to chrome reload so again here's the G where it's being defined Here's where it's translated to 300, 300, and that negative value is um, causing it to be flipped. And just real quickly to show you, I can take that off, save this again, and reload yet again. And now it's uh, in the right, uh, upright, so it didn't flip. Okay. All right, uh, let me go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and I think what we'll do is instead of showing them all at once, we'll um, uncomment them one at a time. So I'm going to hit that, control copy, come on down here and put this in to start a new comment block and then I'll uncomment this one here I mean I'll close the block here so that uncomments the second one now okay let's look at this so the transform is put in a different location and now we're rotating at 90 degrees and notice that's a negative 90 so it should go uh, counterclockwise and then we're also scaling it in both the X and the Y uh, at half size and I'm setting the opacity uh, to 0 0.5. I don't know why that didn't work before. I know it's going to work now. So uh, again I reload and uh, 
Yeah. Looks like I didn't quite get that commented out like I thought. So um, let me go back in there and see. But anyway, here's the new one we were drawing. It is uh, rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. It's half the size. And you can see the opacity uh, is working there too. Let's see what happened. Oh, you know what? I wanted to go ahead and move this up here to comment out that one too. So let's go ahead and reload again. And there we go. Okay. All right. Uh, let's continue. So now we're just going to grab this and move it up. That comments them all out. And we'll uncomment the next one by closing the comment block. And uh, I think we can probably look at both the SKUs at once. So that would be the last part of it here. So let's go ahead and just do that. So the first SKU is an X SKU of 25 units, which is 25 pixels. The other is a Y SKU of 25. Again, we'll reload. And there you go. Okay. And so this is the X SKU and this is the Y SKU. So it's kind of hard to see, but you can sort of see that it's like skewed over this way on the X axis. And this one is skewed down on the Y axis. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and remove all of our comments so we can see them all at once. I'm not sure why I wasn't able to get that... Uh, opacity to turn it off initially. I should have been able to do that. So That's what happens. I get these videos all set up and then I try to extemporize and I always end up biting myself in the ass. So, Alright, here we go. So here's all of ours. That one I changed. Originally that was flipped uh, upright so they weren't all uh, on each other here. What is that? Uh, is that the one that we did this? Oh, it was the scale. That's right, yeah. So that should be a negative. Save that. Yeah, see, because when we do that, then it moves it up. So again, this is the G. And then these are all done with the various transformations, and we're using the use uh, element, which of course is pretty common. So it's real common to create something and then reuse it multiple times. Okay, again, I hope you're enjoying the video sequence. Again, this one was recorded later, but then inserted in the sequence because uh, these techniques really I should have covered earlier in the sequence than I did.